endocrine glands are ductless and deliver their messages or hormones through the bloodstream, while exocrine glands use ducts to secrete their products. The human endocrine system has a gland that acts as both an endocrine gland and an exocrine gland. Ready to see how this works? Take notes. It could be a method we can adopt in our lives. Our objective is to study in detail the anatomy of the pancreas and learn about its function as an endocrine and exocrine gland. In the human body, the pancreas is a very important organ of the digestive system as well as the endocrine system. It helps to maintain our blood sugar levels. A sectional view of the pancreas shows that it is connected to the duodenum by the Y-shaped duct. A magnified view of the pancreas shows the pancreatic cells releasing digestive juices known as pancreatic juices. These juices contain enzymes which are carried through a duct into the duodenum where they act on food substances and break them into simpler forms. Such types of glands secreting different enzymes that are released through ducts are known as exocrine glands. The sectional view of the pancreas also shows a small group of cells known as islets of Langerhans. These islet cells release a hormone known as insulin. This insulin is absorbed into the blood vessels around the pancreas. These blood vessels transport the insulin from the pancreas to the liver cells which are supplied by the hepatic portal vein. This insulin is released from the vein and it reaches the hepatic cells. A closer look at one such cell shows the cell membrane with receptors and inactive glucose transporters enclosed in a vesicle in the cytoplasm. Binding of insulin to the receptor on this cell's membrane leads to rapid fusion of those vesicles with the plasma membrane and insertion of the glucose transporters in the membrane. From these transporters, the glucose molecules gain entry within the cell. Insulin thus helps the cell to absorb glucose molecules from the blood and helps in reducing the blood sugar level. Let us now understand the difference between endocrine and exocrine function of pancreas. The exocrine part of pancreas releases juices rich in enzymes such as pancreatic amylase enzyme into the pancreatic duct. The site of action of this enzyme is close to the site of release. This enzyme acts on starch entering the duodenum and breaks them into disaccharides. So, they directly act on the substrate and form the required product. Whereas the endocrine part of the pancreas releases insulin hormone in small quantities which is absorbed into the blood. Insulin moves through the circulatory system into the liver. The insulin hormone is seen moving in the hepatic veins. It eventually attaches itself to the hepatic cell surface and signals the cell to absorb glucose. The action of the hormone is thus indirect. The site of release and the site of action are far away. To summarize, exocrine gland releases enzymes while the endocrine gland releases hormones. Exocrine glands have ducts while the endocrine glands are ductless and release hormones into the blood. Enzymes act directly on the substrate while hormones act indirectly. In the exocrine gland, the site of action of this enzyme is close to the site of release, while in the endocrine gland, the site of release and the site of action are far away.